war in Ukraine. It's now in its 27th day. Russian and Ukrainian soldiers are battling in the streets, fighting block by block for control of the city of Mariupol, where at least 2,300 people have died. Look at these images. One witness claims 90% of the city is destroyed. President Vladimir Zelensky now saying he would waive a bid to join NATO in exchange for a ceasefire there, the withdrawal of Russian troops, and a guarantee of Ukraine's security. Our Robert Sherman is here to talk about all of this. It's quite a big ask. Uh, he's live in downtown Warsaw, Poland. Millions of Ukrainians have fled there for safety. Uh, Robert, Ukraine's president saying that they've regained at least one city. That's what they're. That's what the Ukrainians are claiming, uh, Adriana. They contend that they've been able to push Russian forces out of a sub suburb of Kiev uh, called Makarov. They say that that's important because it will effectively stop Russian forces from surrend from surrounding Kiev to the northwest. So they claim that they had the momentum there. But meanwhile, in Mariupol, the fighting on both sides remains fierce. This morning, new drone video shows a line of explosions at factories and industrial buildings in Mariupol. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky warns the city is being reduced to ashes by Russian strikes. Ukraine is concentrating its evacuation efforts in Mariupol, but there is no new deal to open a safe corridor for civilians. Defense officials from the United States and its allies agree Russia is losing more men and equipment to guerrilla-style attacks. Ukraine's hit-and-run tactics and ambushes have been disproportionately killing Russia's special forces and other highly trained groups. This morning, we're also getting a new view of the destruction from up above. One new satellite image shows white smoke rising from multiple fires in Mariupol. Another shows multiple apartment buildings burning and throwing smoke into the air. The reality on the ground is hard to confirm independently, as Mariupol has mostly been cut off from the outside world. However, Ukraine says its forces continue to defend the city. In Kherson, the first major city to fall to the Russians, residents can be heard chanting, go home, before troops throw stun grenades and fire into the air to clear the resistance out. Peace talks continue between Ukraine and Russia. Overnight, Ukraine's President Zelensky took a step forward, saying he would be willing to drop a request to join NATO if Russia withdrew and guaranteed Ukraine's security. Also in his nightly address, Zelensky addressed the death of a 96-year-old Holocaust survivor in Kharkiv. The Buchenwald Concentration Camp Memorial Institute shared these photos of Boris Romanchenko. He survived Buchenwald and two other concentration camps. He was killed in an artillery strike. Meanwhile, more than 3.5 million refugees continue to pour into other European countries. Some 6 to 7,000 of them are staying at this center we visited yesterday in Poland. Here they can eat, tap resources, and get medical attention. It's about as good as it gets in these uncertain times. We are so grateful because there's everything we need. We have food, we have medical care, everything is good here. Thank you to other countries for helping us. And Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky continues his diplomatic tour, meeting with the Pope the other day, uh, asking for help when mediating between them and Russia on the humanitarian front. Also speaking to the Italian parliament, where he contends that the Ukrainian forces have the momentum in this fight, but still would like more sanctions brought down on Russia. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.